Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. I am Dr. Vanita Anand and today we are going to discuss about social science down the ages. Learning of social science as all of you know is not a new area of study. The learning of social science has become the part of education system from the very first day of the creation of civilization in this world in one way or other. Ever since the civilization has existed, the learning of social science has existed in one way or the other. Social science in pre-modern era. When we talk about pre-modern era, we are talking from, uh, let us start from the creation of human society to 17th to 18th century. Now, what all does it include? It includes hunting gathering age, pastoral nomadic age, Stone Age, Iron Age, then different river valley civilizations across the world and medieval ages to 18th and 19th century. Here we see the establishment of family, later on paving the way for establishment of society. As we see establishment of family and society being formed, social system became necessary for them. Therefore, there was a necessity of learning social sciences. The learning of social sciences was informal and unorganized one in the beginning. It was not a formal area of study, there was no content, it was not a subject of study. But as day by day, the human society became more complex, new social demands, different kind of challenges, they came and they started being multiplied accordingly. The study of social science became more and more important because when you live in a society, you need to learn about the society. You need to learn how to tackle the problem, how to understand the complexities and sometimes there is a nature to understand why we are what we are. For all these, the study of social science becomes extremely important. Now, the content of social science is drawn from various, various areas, various researchers and various scholars. For example, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle and many other contributors contributed to the content of social sciences. Here we can take the example of Plato's Republic, Aristotle's politics and then there was also civic oath of Greeks. This is basically a formal ceremony that used to take place when the people used to attain maturity. This became an example for the people in other societies to understand what they should do in their society, what they should do for their society and what should be expected out of them as the citizens of a given society. And it is true till today, see, not to bring disgrace to their city by cowardice is expected today also. Fight for the ideals, that is, whatever are the ideals of our state, of our constitution, we still fight for them till today. Obey city's laws, right? Transmit the greater and better city than was transmitted to us. See, whatever we have got, we should transmit it in a better position, in a better condition to the coming generations. Now, new subjects added in medieval and pre-modern world. As we progress towards the medieval civilizations, religion becomes more important. That is why religious studies were added. Then more of trade and business and taxes. So economic and business studies were included. Then state affairs, state, interstate relationship, this led to the inclusion of studies of state affairs. Then the subjects that were added for the attainment of social values because we see the erosion of social values beginning from here. So, social sciences in modern and contemporary world. That is, in the contemporary world, we see social science finally becoming a formal and systematic discipline. Social sciences were emerging to solve the new emerging social problems. As we proceed towards modernization 
as we proceed towards a contemporary age, we see there are n number of problems that we face every day and the new and new problems are coming across every day. Since 18th century, social science became a formal component of higher education in the university curriculum. And when does it become a part of school education? It became a formal component of school curriculum since the 20th century. And why is 20th century important? Because world wars took place. Now, after the world wars, international bodies such as UNESCO, UNICEF, UNDP, UNO and many others, they wanted to promote healthy social living among the people of the world. That is, there was a fear of another world war. There was universal declaration of human rights. Then there was all famous Dela's Commission. All of them emphasized on dignity and equality and also on peace. They laid lots of stress on learning to live together. Dela's Commission is known for this. Now, what does social science strive to do? Basically, social sciences strive to promote the virtue of living together harmoniously. That is, we have to live together and we have to live peacefully. To solve the diverse socio-cultural problems of the modern world. The world we are living in today is a diverse world. It is a differentiated world. There are lots of societies, multiculturalism. So, whatever problems are emerging because of that, and as I told you, we need to live harmoniously. So for that, social science has to work a lot to emphasize on the creation of nation states and practice the democratic and socialistic model of governance. Today, most of the countries are democracies and to make the citizens suitable for democracy is in the ambit of social sciences. To create effective citizens for the practice of democratic and socialistic governance in the nation states. Now, what is the Indian perspective of social science? Now, in India, morality, spirituality, social values and social inclinations are the guiding Indian philosophy of lives and livings since long past. It's not today that we talk about spirituality. It has always been the part of Indian philosophy and it is guiding our lives. It is guiding our living also. Vedas, Upanishads, Smritis, Puranas, Ramayana, Mahabharata, even Gita and all these scriptures which are age old scriptures, they talk about social values and healthy living principles. The Arth Shastra of Kotilya, Panchtantra of Vishnu Sharma, are some of the ancient Indian compositions, these are the texts which deal with social science tenets and principles. They tell us how to lead our lives. Then there are Buddhist texts, Jain texts, Islamic texts, even Bhakti texts. These are in one way or other considered as texts of social and cultural values and heritage. And we lead our lives according to the principles which are given in all these texts. Thus, social sciences had become the part of Indian education and culture system both in the ancient and the medieval time. But it has become formal part of Indian school education system since the formulation of Mahatma Gandhi's basic education. In basic education, they talked about the importance of society, about being the useful citizens, taking, they talked about craft education. Here, the craft should suit the needs of the society and it should be for the needs of the society. It was basically need-based education and need in keeping with the demands of the society. Now, let us talk about social science in various plans and policies. How social science has reached where it is today that is down the ages, how social science emerged. Now, let us first of all talk about the Secondary Education Commission of 1952 and 53. In this commission, it says that it is comparatively a new term in Indian education. Which term? The term social science. Now, what does this term include? It includes history, geography, economics and civics, that is modern day political science. 
Now, according to the Secondary Education Commission, it is to be viewed as a compact whole so as to adjust the students to their social environment. And what is the social environment of students? It is first of all their family, then comes community, state and finally nation. It should help students understand how society has come to its present form and interpret intelligently the metrics of social forces and the movement in the midst of what they are living. That is, they should be able to understand the context in which they are living, why they are in such conditions, how they can bring about change or how the change has come across in the past to bring them to its present form. Then comes the Education Commission of 1964-66. to 66. Here, the aim of teaching social studies is to help the students acquire knowledge of their environment, an understanding of human relationships, attitudes and values which are vital for intelligent participation in the affairs of the community, the state, the nation and finally the world. Because the students today would be citizens tomorrow and if they understand their social context, if they understand the needs not only of their nation but also of the world because Today, we are global citizens. We are not just bothered about our nation or our state or my religion or my region. It is about the world. So that is why they need to understand the human relationships. They should have the values and attitudes and an intelligent participation so that they can be useful global citizens also. Development of good citizenship and emotional integration. This is very important, emotional integration. It, is, it makes them ready for the challenges that they are going to face in future. Then is a framework of NCRT given by 1975 by the name of the Curriculum for 10-Year School, a framework. It says environmental studies will include both natural and social environment in class 1 and 2. And that is how it is taught these days in class 1 and 2 as EVS. It will be more appropriate to use the term social studies rather than social sciences at primary stage because we are not going to give them all the knowledge and expertise since here it represents a broad and composite instructional area where we are giving them the simplified knowledge about the society in which they are living. Then comes National Curriculum for Elementary and Secondary Education in the year 1988. It says, social sciences is the most effective tool for providing education in the context of all the core components which are envisaged by NPE 1986. Now, NPE came in 1986, just two years after comes National Curriculum for Elementary and Secondary Education which covers all the core components of NPE. Now, what are these core components? History of India's freedom movement, constitutional obligations, values such as India's common uh, cultural heritage, egalitarianism, democracy and secularism, equality of sexes, protection of environment and small family norms. Now, all these core components are basically the part of social sciences. All this content is taught as a part of social sciences. Now, after that comes National Curriculum Framework that is NCF 2005. How does it deal with social sciences? Here, the social sciences encompass diverse concerns of society and include a wide range of content that is drawn from the disciplines of history, geography, political science, economics, sociology and anthropology. NCF says the content should aim at raising students awareness through critically exploring and questioning of familiar social reality. So here lots of importance is given to social sciences where it becomes very essential for the student so that he becomes competent enough and empowered enough to critically explore 
and not only just accept the reality of society in which he is living, but rather we should give them such empowerment so that he is in a position to question the social reality and should stand for social justice whenever and wherever needed. Social science perspective and knowledge are indispensable to building the knowledge base for a just and peaceful society. NCF 2005 says, if we need a just and a peaceful society, then it is indispensable. That is, we cannot do without the knowledge of social sciences. Then, the possibilities of including new dimensions and concerns, especially in view of students' own life experiences are considerable. NCF says, whatever life experiences a students come to the classroom with, they should all be included as a part of social science curriculum. So while we are dealing with any content, we can take example from students' own life and there is lots of possibility for doing this. Selecting and organizing material into a meaningful curriculum. What kind of meaningful curriculum? One, that will enable students to develop a critical understanding of society and it is a challenging task. But it is being done in our classrooms on day to day basis. Teachers are transacting curriculum in a manner, especially in social sciences classroom, whereby the students get a critical understanding of the society. Now, what does the position paper of social sciences say? According to NCF 2005, it says social science curriculum should enable the students <coughs> to face and negotiate society. Day to day basis, number of new problems are emerging students face number of new problems for which they have to generate their own solutions. For this, the students of social science should be given a curriculum or should be taught according to a syllabus so that they are empowered, they, a syllabus that enables them to face and negotiate the problems of society. Understand contexts. Whatever context is there, whenever they are being taught anything, they should be made aware as to where they are going to use this particular content in their life. Crisis of values in society. This again is in the ambit of social sciences. In our society today, all of us talk about crisis of values. So much of crime and number of new problems are emerging every day. Now, through social science, we can inculcate values. Understanding social issues and challenges and be a tool of change in a positive way. Be a positive tool of change. Understand what social issues are there, what challenges are there and how to tackle those challenges. Then, problem in social science teaching learning. There are certain problems that a teacher has to face while you teach social science. For example, the content of social science basically is only giving factual information. Now, fa facts should be given but with examples to tell the students how it is related to their life. Just giving them facts is not going to solve the purpose. When we just give them factual information, students find it boring. This is the consequence of how they are getting taught, how they are getting information. Since it is only factual information and they are not able to relate it to the problems of life, hence they start finding it boring. Least application in the life of children. That is what we have discussed just now. That is, when they see the problem as having no connection with their, li with their life, they find it boring. Another problem is they are being taught by the behavioristic approach. Now, NCF came in 2005 and it talked about a paradigm shift to constructivist approach. But till today, the students are being taught through the behavioristic approach. Now, in behavioristic approach, it is not learner-centered approach and learners are passive. So, that is why all these problems, factual information, they finding it boring and not having any application to the life is because of the behavioristic approach. If we start using constructivist approach rather than the behavioristic approach, many of the problems would be solved. Another problem is curriculum overload. There is too much syllabus to be covered. And that is why the students and the teachers are always in rush. They have lots of overload. And another problem is the entire system is competition and examination driven. 
there is a need, there is an effort to get more and more marks rather than drawing pleasure out of study of social sciences rather than getting a satisfaction of knowing their society and also being empowered to face the challenges that they are going to face in the future now there are certain recommendations in ncf 2005 according to which it says equality social justice and diversity should be discussed in the classrooms and there is lots of scope in the social science curriculum while teaching fundamental rights while teaching about world wars and many such things the concepts such as equality social justice and diversity can be easily taught then help them understand socio economic problems why these problems are there what has led to these problems that is the causes and how they can be solved students own context and environment should be focused upon that is they should be encouraged to talk about their own life experiences about the kind of problems that they are facing in their lives and how the study of social science is going to help them solve these problems relationship between concepts and context that is whatever they are learning how this is going to be useful in their own lifestyle now encourage students to form their own opinion that is they should be given empowerment they should be given the knowledge and they should be encouraged to draw conclusions that is constructivist approach what is the current status of society now when we talk about social sciences uh today society our society is modern and post modern society it possesses certain specific features and characteristics that were hardly found in the earlier societies what are these we would just come to them there are new kind of challenges new phenomena which were never seen before development challenges dilemmas and issues are like never seen before current social phenomena and challenges are our society is fast growing society it is growing at a rapid pace not only population even science and technology if you compare it just with the previous 5 years you would see the difference complexity heterogeneity diversity differentiation in almost all spheres of life be it economic political cultural and religious everything is you can add multi to everything it's multicultural multi religious and so on new social orders like modernization industrialization urbanization specializations in all areas automation is a new concept which was never seen before everything is being automated globalization then privatization and so on there are so many things liberalization all these things are new who is going to teach all of them social sciences how we understand all of them because we have studied social sciences new social values like democracy socialism secularism liberty equality fraternity and so on these are all in the ambit of social sciences wide range of social mobility multiculturalism multipluralism as i told you multi can be added to everything multilingualism now all this has led to various problems and what are these problems poverty unemployment exploitation based on capitalism then development of slums social alienation and most serious problem population problem leading to family disorganization social crimes black marketing and so on now in a differentiated society there are a large number of social problems as we have seen this has led to emergence of number of new social science subjects such as social work public administration criminology psychology demography etc our society is facing unique problems like population explosion as i told you the most serious problems then there are crimes which were never heard of before like cyber crime terrorism depletion of natural resources so today the scope of social sciences is gradually increased and is increasing now in 21st century 
The social science has to deal with technological development and that is why it has to take the help from ICT. Then constructive learning environment is to be created in the environment in the classroom so that the students learn to have a connection between what is being taught and in their classrooms. Resource management and sustainable development. Peace education to deal with all the problems of modern day society and to empower them with the 21st century skills that is communication, creativity, critical thinking and collaboration. And social science has the capability to do all of them very effectively. Thank you.